Hello everyone, it's Amy and welcome back for week 10 of the new Build Your Stash and Craft. Today we are going to make colored paper and colored fabric and we are going to make some colored fluid for other projects that we can use. So I've started out here in the basin with two cups of water. Now you could make it with a little more. The less water you use, the more color you'll have in your water and the less water you use, the, the more color you'll have. So more water, less color, if I said that right. So we're just going to, I'm gonna start here with the orange or red, and we're gonna take our Kool-Aid. Um, before we go any further, we're gonna put on our gloves because Kool-Aid will stain your hands. It will eventually come off, but if you don't wanna have to have stained hands for a while, I'm not sure how long it would take to come off. Definitely I like to wear gloves for something like this because I'm going to be sticking my hands right in there. There, okay. So we're just going to put our Kool-Aid right in the water. Again, two cups of water, one packet of unsweetened Kool-Aid. You don't want to, if you can only find the ones with sugar in them, you don't want to use that because then that sugar is going to soak into your paper. That's, that's not going to be a good thing in any way, shape, or form. So um, if you can't do that, then just go ahead and wait. But then you're just going to mix it around. Now this is um, just plain cool water. It's not warm or anything like that. And Kool-Aid isn't made to to dissolve in warm water. You know, it's, um, it's Kool-Aid, so you just put it in regular tap water, which is what this is, just regular tap water. You could use um, you know, distilled water or something like that if you want to. You can boil your tap water to make it distilled water. I think that's how they distill water. Um, I just use regular tap water, and I've not had a problem. So we're just going to mix this in good until I can't feel any little granules of color on the bottom. Now, if there are still granules of color on the bottom, is that a bad thing? Not necessarily, because if there are, then they'll just leave kind of like little starbursts on your paper or, you know, some kind of marking on your paper, depending on how big they are. Alrighty, so that's it. Now we've got our color. So um, after this, after you see this, I'm going to start putting these in one at a time just making sure that they're covered completely with, with the coloring before including your corners. Don't forget your corners and make sure it's completely covered before you put the next piece on. So I'm just gonna be putting some in there while I'm talking. Um, after this, I will show you, oh, one other thing is try not to put them exactly on top of each other. Leave some kind of a little bit of a difference. So here I can see a point there and a point there. That way, um, when you go to get them out, it's a little easier to get out if they're not sitting exactly on top of each other. So if you put them in and they're on top of each other, it's not gonna hurt anything. You just have to work at getting them um, separated. So, but, um, so I'm gonna get these all in here and let them sit for just a few seconds. And then, I'm going to take them out and tell you what I'm doing with them. And then you will see after we get through that point, you will see um, what I'm talking about as far as when I tell you what I'm doing. Um, you will see that next with the purple papers. So with the purple papers, I got them all dyed and out on the table so that they could start drying and because I thought that it might be easier to have some already dried. I don't know. I don't know why I did it backwards, but I did. So, but you're going to see that. You'll see how I have them laid out on the table and then you can, you know, do whatever you have for your area. If you don't have, I, I probably have about a four by four space here right now. And um, so if you don't have a space that's that big, you can just dye them in here. I'm gonna show you a few different things that I'm gonna do. 
So, but the thing is you do want them to sit just a little bit in the color. The longer they sit, the more colorful they will get. I have noticed, um, or I did notice on the purple ones, that the, I think maybe we'll do like one or two more. Um, the dictionary pages, because I'm going to do some dictionary pages in here, did not take the color as well as the copy paper did. It's not as absorbent. So, and then I just thought of it just now. So when I do my next color, which I'm not, I'm going to do all six colors. So then I'll show you what they look like. And I will have my colored water then for all six colors. Um, except I may or may not do the lemonade. I'm not sure how yellow that's going to be. I think I remember doing yellow once before and it was just so pale you could hardly see it. So I don't know, I'll decide on that when I get that far. I'll do it last, and if I'm too tired to do it, then I just won't. Um, I should have maybe put the dictionary pages in first so that they would be soaking longer because it does take a while to get them all in, and then it takes a while to get them all out individually. So whatever's on the bottom will have been in the color the longest. So when, when I do the blue... Take that off of there. Um, I'll try and remember to put the, whoops, don't put your paper right on top of your paper because then you won't get good color in that spot. You can, it will give you a different look. Oh, and I wanted to try and see if I did a paper heart, what that would look like. So while this is drying, I'm gonna cut a paper heart, or while this is coloring, I'm gonna cut a paper heart so that we can I'll cut two. I will cut one, two, put between a couple pages that's wet, and I will do one that's dry, and we'll see if that uh, makes any difference. Now, when you have your gloves, don't throw them away. When you're all done, um, right now, because we're working with red, I'm gonna wash them or I mean, just dry them. But when you're all done, you can just go to your sink and just wash your hands just like you normally would and then take your gloves off and set them aside to dry so so that you can keep them. These, are, these gloves are good enough to set this aside for a second. And I'm gonna use my regular scissors. Ooh, if I can, oh, there they are. Um, they're good enough to use until you get a hole in them. You know, I mean, and they last a little while. All right, so I'm just gonna do a couple of quick hearts. And then I'll have two things. I'll have a colored heart to use, and hopefully, maybe it will put some marks on our paper. So I'm going to leave one dry, and I'm going to put one in the water. There we go. Alrighty, now that one's not going to get a whole lot of color, but I am going to start removing them. So I'm going to take the dictionary pages, and I'm going to put one all by itself. If I can get to them... I wanted to try and get all three of them out of here so I could leave the heart in there. Alrighty. I'm gonna dry one by itself and I'm going to dry one on top of the other. Right on top of the other to see kind of what we get with this. Okay, when you take them out of your water, take them out one page at a time and for two reasons. Number one, so you don't waste your water because you'd be surprised there's a lot of water kind of soaked up in here and so that you don't make as big of a mess and they dry a little faster just put them along the edge of your tub and just kind of drag them up the edge don't put them back in the water and then just kind of drag them along the inside edge and that way that kind of gets some of that water off of there just to let them dry a little bit quicker now I'm just going to set this on my plastic And 
And I'm going to take these two. I'm going to put one on top of the other, but I still am going to take them out one at a time and just kind of try and get the water off there. Now, I had a little strip of paper on the edge of that dictionary page, and it kind of went right there. I'm going to leave that there and see what that does. It's fun to see what what happens to them when you do them in different ways. What happens if I fold it over? What happens if I put one on top of another? You know, what happens if I set something on it? What happens if I put a dry page on a wet page? As a matter of fact, I didn't do this with the purple, which you're gonna see them all laid out on the table with the purple, but I'm gonna take one more dictionary page and I'm gonna, I've got one on the table, I'm gonna put this one on top of it and then put this one on top of that. So there's a dry one between the two. So I've got a wet one, now the dry one. I messed up this corner and I wanna try and straighten it out, but if you can't, you can't. And if you don't, it's just gonna give you a little extra possible color or texture on your paper. Alrighty, now I'm gonna try and lay this flat on top of the dry one. And I gave them a little bit of a pat. I just kind of padded the top one all the way around. I'm going to pick up my drips so that my plastic doesn't have a bunch of wet spots, but the drips, if you leave them there and set a piece of paper on top of them, may cause a darker spot in that part of your paper, which might look cool. All right, so now I am going to take the heart out and just set it aside for a second. Look at how richly red that got. Or pink maybe just in that short period of time the the kool-aid colors really do um really does give you a lot of color so i'm just going to take this one just give it a shake i'm going to put one all by itself and if you rip your corners off that's okay. It's very rarely that you use a whole eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper for anything. So if you rip a corner off, that doesn't do anything to change the fact that you've got a beautiful colored piece of paper. So, you know, you're just, and you'll wind up with at least some that aren't, you know, a little tattered on the corner. So if you need a full sheet to be perfect, um, you know, you will have some. So in this, I noticed that this very much, I don't know if you can see those, like, it's like the paper bubbles up. Now, when the purple dried, though, those little bubbles did not, I was kind of hoping they'd stay there. It looks kind of like alligator skin or something, but it, it didn't stay there. It did go away. Now, I've laid that sheet down, and now I'm going to take this dyed heart and put it on top. Try and put it on as flat as I can. Okay. And then I'm going to take... Do I want to put another piece on top of that? Maybe not. Maybe I'll just... I'm just going to leave that one just like that. Okay, now I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to lay it down and I'm going to put another piece right down the middle so it's half on and half off. Whoops, I just ripped the corner off, so I'm going to take it right off of there. And this one started to rip here. That's totally okay. Lay this one out on the plastic. And I'm going to take this little one like I did on the purples. You'll see, I'm going to put this on the corner of one of my book pages. Um just because I like the way it looked when it dried. Um, or, I mean, I like the way it looked while it was drying. It really didn't do much of anything. So I'm gonna make this one be half on and half off. I need to move my light. I'm not gonna do that, it's gonna move you. 
there. Okay, well, it's overlaid a little bit so we can see what it looks like, how it dries overlaid. Because different things dry differently. If this was paint in this water and it was overlaid, I think there would be a much larger difference in color. In the purple one, it really did not make much of a difference in color where they were overlaid, just a very little bit. Okay, I'm going to set this one down. And I'm going to take the dry heart and put it on top of that one. And now with that one, I am going to put another piece on top. So it's like a sandwich. Colored paper, dry paper in the form of a heart, and then colored paper again. And then I'm going to give it just a bit of a pat to make them come into contact with each other. So you can also put them on parchment paper. Parchment paper leaves some kind of nice um, lines. And I'm still waiting to, for the purple to completely dry to see the color kind of separated from purple to having, oops, I ripped it again. You have to be very careful when you're playing with the copy paper that's completely soaked like this. I'm just going to put just a piece of parchment with a page, with a page on it. Oops. And then I'm going to put another piece of parchment on top and then put a page on it. Um the parchment kind of pulled the reddish color out of the purple, out of the purple dye and um yeah, see, as I'm trying to soak that off, I am ripping my paper. So It'd be better to just give it a shake and not do that with the larger pieces that are, I guess, say more tender. The dictionary pages are, they're just a lot sturdier. So I'm going to do a, shoe, a few of them on parchment. And I'm not going to put this on the leftover. Is this my last piece? It is. Okay. Let's give it a little bit of a tap. I still like to kind of at least knock off some of that extra. And I did find that the ones I stacked on top of each other, now I just did a couple, but they didn't stick. Because sometimes, to me, it seems like if you dry colored papers together, sometimes they want to stick. And that could be the binder in the paper itself. So this is the paper we got at Walmart, and so maybe the binder is a little different because sometimes they stuck to where when you tried to peel them apart, they actually ripped. And the purple did not do that. So, okay, so then the next thing that I did after I made some colored copies was, oh, and the other thing I did was I did put some inside of a magazine. And I'm gonna, I'll just do a couple of light colored ones here. just because they're not going to be able to I'll do it right here they're not going to be able to soak in here as long but I'll just show you how I did that so like if you have a very small space this may be a way um, to dry them in a small space and I was kind of hoping that maybe it would pick some color up out of the magazine but it did not which, you know, I mean, that's, it's all trial and error, and it's all about just seeing, well, what happens if I do this, and what happens if I do that? So, um, you know, that's the, that's the fun of it, and it takes a while. Um, I air-dried the purple papers completely. Well, they were, a few of them were still just a touch damp, but for six hours, and they were dry enough, they're all stacked on top of each other now and sitting in the other room. So that was six hours for one color, taking up this space. Now, if I put them all in books like this, um, let me see, I'm gonna move my parchment. Um, then, you know, I could do one color in each book and set them aside until they dry, let them dry overnight. But it takes a little while. It really doesn't take that long to color. How many have we done? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 
13, 14, 15 by the time we're done with these three. That I have three right here. All right, so that's 15 pages in not much time at all. Um, it's been 20 minutes, but partly because I've been explaining and everything too. So it doesn't really take that long. The hardest part is, again, the drying time. But so I'm just going to set that in there. Now, I did do some in a good housekeeping or something like that. Um, except I took that in the other room, which is smaller, so the page stuck out a little bit, but it still made it so that it was to separate each page so that they didn't stick together. And I kind of thought the magazine soaking some of the fluid out of the paper um, would help it so that it might dry faster. You could pad it, you know, with a paper towel or a napkin um, to to make it maybe dry a little bit faster, you can hit them with a, with a hair dryer if you have one. Um, I normally dry my papers by the fireplace. So, you know, there's a lot of other ways that you can get them to dry just a touch faster. But most of them, if you just leave it overnight, it is probably gonna be dry in the morning. Um, the ones that I took out of the magazines were still damp, so I'm not sure how they would be dry in the morning you know, or how dry they would be, but definitely it was six hours in the magazine. I took them out. They were dry enough to stack on top of each other without any worry of them, you know, getting all over the place. So, you know, the, you have to have the patience of letting them dry. Okay, so I believe that that's the way that I did those. And then what I did was I took one of our bottles and our funnel on my plastic so that I didn't get it anywhere. And then I just put the color in there. Now, with the purple, I definitely had some extra left over. So watch your bottle, make sure you don't overfill it. Like I think I just did. So I overfilled it, so I'm gonna hold it over here before I take the, nope, I didn't, okay. There we go. And then just wipe that off. So now we have this red color that we'll be able to keep. There's no sugar or anything in here. So it should keep okay. If you want, you can put a few drops of um, hand sanitizer in there. Make sure you shake it every time that you use it. Hand sanitizer has rubbing alcohol in it. And, or isopropyl alcohol or whatever they call it. Um, and so that make that will make it so that it, it won't mold. Now I did some of these with our last series. And had them for four years and they didn't mold. So... But if you're afraid of that, you can always just put a few drops of rubbing alcohol or a few drops of the other in there. Just make sure, because those smell like Kool-Aid, that they're marked poisonous so nobody drinks them. Um, so see, we have this much left now. So then what I did was I took some of my pages and I dunked them in here. To kind of use up what I had left. I did wind up um, dumping out just a little bit. So, but I did use a lot of it. So, and I have some again, like we have, like I just showed you, we've got some in those bottles for another time. Alrighty, so I did this. And then I'm going to move this out of the way so that you can, well, let me see. I'm gonna put, how do I wanna do this? Cause I wanna show you two things. All right, I'm gonna put this out right here in front of us. Just like this. Okay, now it's a little bit damp. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take our coffee and you can just use a spoon. I forgot to bring a spoon, so I had this thing. I don't know what it is. My husband got it somewhere um, or with something. I, d I really don't even know what it is. And it's got a little, um, a little hole in it. So I'm just scooping it out with this. But you can just use a regular spoon out of your kitchen and just sprinkle it around. Not, try not to get it too thick so that you don't wind up with, with great big um, blotches that... I don't know what to say. I, I just don't like it when it's too thick. And, and if it gets super thick and it dries that way, um, some of those spots really um, 
if you were to pour a big spot right there, it would dry very dark. And then it could, I've had a couple of them, they cracked right there where there was a whole bunch of it. And um, I don't know, I just, I kind of didn't like it. So that is one way that I put coffee on them. And actually, and then that continues to um, kind of melt or something. And then, what I did with another one, I'm actually going to, I'm just going to take a second, and throughout this whole thing, you can fast forward any part that you don't want to watch, because this is going to be a long video. I really, really want to do one more of these this way, because, and, and there's some bits of this that are more powdery and some that are more chunky. Um, the more, the powdery more part, like I can see it's real powdery right here. Um, those ones, I like to put that part on better. But you may like the chunkier parts better. It's all, you know, it's all about just what you like or, or what you don't like. Okay, so now I have two of those. Just going to set that aside. Okay, and then with this one here... I'm going to just sprinkle a little bit right on top. And in, in this case, the big chunky parts work better because they melt a little bit slower than the, uh, the not chunky parts. And then I'm just going to do like that and take it right out. So it kind of gives us a little bit of color on there. And I noticed with the purple, it dyed a whole lot lighter. Or I mean, dried a whole lot lighter. So, and then, to just use up the rest of it, I just put some coffee in there. Just to kind of give me a different color. Um kind of a, a brownish red or to tone back the pink a bit and with the purple I didn't put very much in there at all and it was still quite purple which I want it purple but I kind of am looking maybe for like a brown with a red tint I don't know so I'm going to make this one put a little bit more coffee in there and if you ever want to do coffee dyed paper you can do it this way with regular paper and water and sprinkle it on like we did first or sprinkle it on top of the wet paper and then let it kind of run off or just dye your water with the coffee and then dye your paper brown and you can also tea dye paper just like this and with the tea dyed paper um, just make a cup of tea with three or four bags of tea bags and um, the the more the darker your tea the darker your dyeing will be and the thing is you do want to let it sit a little bit let it soak into your paper to give your paper the most color possible So there we go, and I will probably do even a couple more of these. I'm gonna put in, why not? Let's put in a couple of dictionary pages. Remember to get it wet top and bottom first because, you know, surprisingly enough, you would think that the water would soak right through, but the color doesn't soak through and the water doesn't necessarily soak through. You wind up with like dry spots. And so those spots then are white. And I don't, I, I like it if my paper has dark color, light color. That doesn't bother me, but I don't like it when it's got color and then it's got a big white spot. That is me. You know, there's nothing wrong with it. And a lot of people like that. They like to have that bit of white in there. And I think that that's just kind of a, it's, it's just a, it's a thing. So there we go. Now, letting those soak a little bit, we'll let them get darker. And 
then I will show you what color they turned out to be um, when I come back after the purple. So you're going to see the purple all laid out. You're not going to see me doing this part. And then I will come back and I'll show you all the different colors I did once they're dry. So because I need to get these on the table, let them dry a little bit before I move them, then do another color and another color and um, until we get to the end. So I will see you in just a second with the purple papers, papers all laid out on the table showing you how I laid them out here. So be back in a sec. Okay, so this video is being done in parts. So this will be somewhere in the middle, but so this is the purple papers I did and I'm going to show, well, you you will already have seen how I did these with another color. Um, but because, you know, I have to put them out on my table, I'm doing them one color at a time. These papers, uh, the dictionary papers have been drying for one hour and these have been drying for an hour here and here. These have just been drying for about 15 minutes. And so they're gonna dry for about an hour, but I'm gonna kind of show you, um, cause I think I'll be doing this with the other colors too, but just in case I forget a step. So I have just a plain dictionary paper and those dictionary papers and these papers soaked the same amount of time, probably about 10 or 15 minutes. The dictionary papers did not suck the color up as much. Now these bits here, they're there because when I picked up this piece of paper out of the water, the corners ripped off. So I just took those corners and I put them there. So after these are completely dry and I pick them up, you'll see what they look like. But what I've done is just a dictionary page. This is two dictionary pages, one overlapping another just a regular copy paper. And then I have two regular copy papers with one copy paper overlapping. So we'll see what those look like when we pick them up. And um, then this one, I, I fold it over on purpose to see what it looks like when they fold over on themselves. This is a piece of fabric that I did in the purple. And then as those were drying, I went ahead and I filled up my little bottle with what was left of the purple and there was still some left over. So then I came back later and I decided, well, I had put this piece of paper in and um, there are also a few of these underneath because I put some between parchment to see how well they come off. Those are set right on top of each other. Sometimes when paper pages dry on top of each other, they kind of want to stick. Sometimes they come apart easily, so we're gonna see how they are with parchment between them, and we're gonna see how they are just drying like that. So um, so those, these pages here um, soaked for a little while in not as much color because I had already poured a whole bunch of the liquid out. So they were, they were just barely in the water. Then I, took one of them that these probably soaked for about maybe 10 minutes or something um, before I put them between the parchment and put this one on top. And so this one, I sprinkled the instant coffee dry right on top of the paper. Then I stuck one a new paper into the color. So it's not real colorful because it wasn't there very long. And I sprinkled some of the powdered coffee on top of it and then just kind of swished it off and took the page out. Then I put some more coffee into the water, which is there, and mixed it all together. So the purple and the coffee were mixed together and I dyed these two pages. Now these were just in and outs, maybe a minute. You know, they weren't in there very long at all. So they're much lighter. And the longer you leave them in, the darker they get. So this, then I put one more piece in there and I'm gonna let that one set for about 10 minutes. It's probably been in there maybe five minutes so far. I'm gonna let it set 10 minutes before I take it out and we're gonna see what this does here because see, there's not much water left. When I'm done, what I have left, I am going to get rid of. I could continue soaking it up with different papers 
As a matter of fact, maybe after I take that one out, I might throw a few dictionary pages in there. So I also did, and I did wear my gloves because I didn't want my hands being dyed purple or any other color that we're going to do here today. I apologize for the little bit of shadow. I have every light on. Um, but then I also took a few pages or a few pieces of our paper after they were dyed and I stuck them in a magazine. Now I think this is gonna take kind of forever to dry, but I'm gonna let them sit for a little bit and they're not gonna be completely dry when I take them out, but I figured they won't stick to each other because I'm afraid those ones there, that they might really stick together. I'm not sure, we're gonna just try it. A lot of times it depends on the paper, it depends on what you're dyeing them with and everything. And then I also have some in here somewhere. I have a couple pages. There's one there that I'm drying in there. So, and I'm and I'm not sure. That's a nice big magazine. So that's what I was going to use. And then I thought, well, this is the only magazine I've ever seen that size. So I just went to a regular size magazine. Um, you know, so that's going to stick out a bit, but at least it's not you know, they're not sitting right on top of each other. So this is the purple section. And what I'm going to do, I think I'm just going to leave it for another hour or so. Like I said, those have been drying for an hour. And actually what I'm going to do like right now is the ones that have been drying for one hour. I'm going to just go in and I'm just going to lift them up and then just lay them back down. So just to get some air underneath of them and um, so that maybe they'll dry faster. So I think that I'm going to kind of let those dry at least another hour. And then I may hit them with my hair dryer. If you don't have a hair dryer, let them dry overnight. Maybe I should leave the ones in the magazine overnight. But I'm going to probably finish this video today. We'll see. Um, because if you let them dry overnight, they'll probably be dry by tomorrow, depending on how wet they get. If you put a whole bunch of them in a magazine, it's probably going to take a little while for them to dry. And then it depends on, do you have a place to dry them? Because normally when I dry papers, which I'm not doing this these this way, but we have a wood stove and I put down newspaper and parchment and I put them around my wood stove on the floor and then just make sure that I keep a really close eye on them. But the floor is kind of warm from underneath, the air is warm up above, and I don't get them super close. So, you know, um, I've done, I've dried my papers that way always. So unless it's summertime, summertime I dry them outside. So, and I thought of if we had some nice snow that I would dry some outside, kind of freeze dry them, except we're getting rain today and ice. So I can't do that because I thought, I wonder what that would look like. That'd be kind of cool. So if you have some snow, that might be fun to kind of try dye them, set them in the snow, sprinkle a little snow on top and see how they turn out. So, okay. So this is the middle of the video. Um, and you will have already seen me do hopefully all of these steps with another color. And, but I wanted to let you see what they look like at an hour dry. These are maybe now 20 minutes dry or so. And, um, and just show you that I am going to just kind of as they start to dry, and I do this, you know, quite often, even by my fireplace, um, as they start to dry, I pick them up and set them back down again. Sometimes I pick them up and I turn them over. Then the other side gets a chance to dry a little bit too. Because look at that dictionary page. That's drying very nicely. This one, yeah, that one is already dry. And so as they start to get dry, then I just start picking them up so I can put more there. But, okay, so I will be back again with whatever I'm going to show you next. See you in a minute. Okay, I'm back with the purple papers. We're still kind of in the middle of the video, which you already know that. I'm trying to figure out where these are all going to fit together. But I wanted to show you these have set now for about six hours. So I did flip these all over. And so let's see how... Okay, so the dictionary pages come apart easily and looks really good. Let's see if, let's see if this comes off well. 
Okay, so that does also come off well. And it kind of looks, it is a little bit lighter, but n not as light as it looks on through the camera. So I'm not so sure how this will, how it's going to show up, but it does, you know, you can see the lightness here, but it's not as light as, it's not as light as it looks. If you didn't know that was there, looking at this in person, you would not see that spot. So um, I just wanted to see what that would do. So those are completely dry. And even the little bits are completely dry. This is, that one is also completely dry. And that was a single page. So now these ones that are hooked together, let's see. Okay, they're damp still a little bit where they're, and I did flip this set too. Damp where they were sitting together. And just want to make sure that I don't tear the paper. And I think also that if you let the paper really dry well, I think they come apart. If they're kind of stuck and they start peeling a layer of paper off the other one, maybe let them dry completely if they're still damp. And it might they might come apart without peeling a layer of paper off. Alrighty, so now that one I thought would be really light um, in one of these areas, and it is not. So the they smell really good. Now this one is definitely, this is the one that was underneath the two, and it definitely does have a darker line right down the middle, which is really quite cool actually. And then where they were put together here, there are lots of little like bubbles where the bubbles were between the two pages. So that's awesome. And the thing when you dye your paper, and I find it with when you dye it with anything, it seems to make the paper heavier. So let's see what this did. Okay, that is separating without ripping and didn't make any kind of a difference to the coloring. So that one looks good. And I did not flip that one over, I don't think. So, and these ones have not been drying as long, but they are also dry. These are the ones that were, had coffee in the paper. Here's the one that was in the vat that still had the water on it to soak it a little longer. And it really didn't get much darker. And it did not leave a spot in the middle. I thought it might leave a, a darker spot in the middle where the water was sitting, but it didn't do that. Okay, so now this one is sitting on top of parchment. And it is still damp, but it's also sitting on top of basically like a pile. I love the way that the coffee looks. Whoops, that corner I didn't get unstuck. I love the way the coffee looks on these. So, and with that coffee, I just lightly sprinkled it so that it would completely melt in. If you get a big chunk of coffee on there, it kind of looks cool because it dries very dark and it and it has a shine to it. But I've had it cracked before, like when I folded it there. And I just, I kind of don't like the fact that it's not... This has soaked into the paper. That has not. So, you know, to me, I think that that could cause some problems later on. Our fabric is dry. And that one um, did get soaked for a while. And it's not super dark. Here is another one of the coffee papers. Now, here's the ones that are between parchment. I can see water here on this one. So, these are still very damp. I have two pieces on this one. If I can figure out how to, actually I might have more than two pieces. I'm just trying to figure out if I can even get them apart with one hand or not. Okay, so there we go. These are very wet. So they'll need to be set out and set aside. The way that they dry on the plastic works really well. So that is a good way to do it. Oh, and what I did with, I have two garbage bags here. There's one there, and then the other one is right here. I overlapped them a bit so I didn't get anything on my table. And what I did was I cut both sides off the plastic bag, and then it had a string around the top, so then I cut that 
the and I cut the top off and then I just opened them up and laid them on my table and basically they wound up being like four feet wide and they're probably about four feet long too so it gave me a nice large area and again if you don't have plastic garbage bags um you can just cut some of your other plastic bags and, and put them out like that too, just making sure that you overlap them. I'm gonna put that one out there. So there were two layered together there. And then I believe that this is just one. I like the pattern on that if it dries like that, that's really quite cool. And this one again is still very wet, so it will need to dry. There we go. And you can see how it um, touched the parchment in places and not in others. So where the spots were it touched, um, I'm noticing a little bit of pink in my purple in those areas where it touched. So I like that. That's really kind of cool. We'll see if that dries quite a bit like that. And so what I am going to do is, now I kind of find, especially with a cheap parchment, that if I use it again, it's not as non-stick as it was before, especially, you know, when you get it wet like this. So, but I am gonna try putting another one on here and layering them up like I did here because I wanna see if some of this color picks up off of the parchment uh, for, for another color, maybe a lighter color like yellow or something like that I might put on here. But um, trying to think if I need to do it while they're still wet. I'm really not sure, but that actually looks really cool too. And that can be used for other things, or it can be used as a drop cloth at another time. Let's check the magazine. The magazine is so-so. It, I mean, it's not completely dry. It kind of has some little streaks of red in it. And that may just be dark purple actually. So we'll have to see when it completely dries. But this is a little drier than what was between the parchment. I think I only put one in there. I believe I put two in here, if we can find them. And this is super thick and it was closed really well. So, let's see how wet they are. Um, not as damp as the other magazine. I'm surprised, I thought they would be wetter. So they're, you know, they're kind of, they're dry enough to kind of toss somewhere that's that's protected but doesn't have to be totally plastic. I think this must be, my next one must be right here. Yep. Okay, and this one got a fold in it when I put it in there. And that one again kind of has little red streaks in it but we'll have to see um, if they're gonna be there when it dries. But I think possibly, you know, that's the Kool-Aid, that's the, um, the, the colorant in the Kool-Aid that's separating what they use to make their purple with. Um, so now the thing is, is if you aren't going to use these again, you're going to want to, if you're not going to throw them away, leave them open so they can dry. So it'll also give you some cool texture that you could use on a different project if you're doing a canvas or something as a background and then paint over top of it, but you've got some cool texture to it because of it being wet. So that's what we've got with the purple. So um, I'm going to go away and I'll be back with it. Probably I'll be back with the final colorings. So be back in a sec. Okay, so I am back for the final reveal. We have our cherry papers, which on this one we stacked a wet paper, a wet paper, and put a dry paper between them. And so the dry paper still picked up the color, and this color is not quite showing up as bright um, through the camera as what it is here, um, or as dark, or however you want to put that. But we got some really nice color. I like the center one, it has a few little lines in it that did not color, that was kind of nice. So we have that one, and then we have just our, um, oh, this is the one that we put the heart between. We put a dry heart between the two pages, and it didn't leave much of a mark. I thought it might soak up more color and really like show the heart as a different color. It doesn't really. 
a little bit more on the bottom piece, but the heart also turned out really cool and does have some white spots on it, which looks really nice. So, and then we just have another one of the darker colors. And then the ones that we did not soak as long. Then this one is the cherry after we um, put some of the coffee in it and then just took it out. So the difference in those colors is actually very noticeable. This one looks more vintage. This one just is more brighter color. And the one where we sprinkled our coffee. And then this one is grape. And I forgot to color um, a piece of fabric for the cherry. So, but here is our grape. And actually, this fabric turned out, I wonder if I have something white. So you can kind of actually see the color. It's drawn down out the back. But the purple, the grape actually turned out a little pinker um, on the fabric than it did on the paper. So we have the spots here where I had put this on the corners to see if that would soak up some of the paper or the color from our um, dictionary page and it didn't but it did leave darker edges where those two pieces were so and then this one is look the the purple separated so it's kind of purple and pink so that's actually quite cool and that was just one of the second um, dyes here's the real dark dye and the lighter dye oh no you know what I lied. This is the one we put in the magazine, and that's what made the colors separate. That's what that one is. And then this is a lighter color with the coffee on it. So you can kind of see the differences there. And the, the, um, the coffee that was just sprinkled and left to dry. Then we have the blue raspberry, which turned out very light. Um, again, the... Uh, the fabric did color blue, but very, very light blue. The dictionary pages, again, really light. Not much of a difference at all on those. And then here is the one that I stuck in the magazine. And this one, um, the purple separated colors. This one I stuck in the same page as the purple after I took the purple out. And so then it picked up some of that purple out of the magazine. Um, to get those little stripes on there. I don't know how well you can see them, but that one looks really nice. And then we have, this is our darkest blue, I believe. The blue did not get very dark at all. Um, kind of hard to maybe see it in the camera, but put it against the white. It really does look blue. It's just kind of a baby blue. And then we have our coffee where we sprinkled it. And then our coffee that we kind of just had in the water. So we've got a nice difference in color there. And then we have our lemonade. Not much color in the yellow at all. Um, I did dye the fabric on that one. And it did give us a touch of color, not much. Um, I had, then I did um, some red afterwards and I forgot to pick up my fabric. So it actually soaked up some of that red. So that turned out nice. But yeah, the yellow, not much color whatsoever. This is the yellow. And again, we can see the yellow along the edge right here, but really the, the coloring in the, in the paper itself, it's almost a bluish color. So this is the yellow that was, again, stuck in the magazine on a page that I had done red on, and I put it in the same pages in the magazine. This is the yellow with coffee sprinkled on it, and again, it has a bluish tint to it. It's not really yellow at all. And then here is the yellow with the coffee, and I did save the yellow coffee because I did kind of like that color. And then our last one is black cherry. Black cherry gave us a really nice deep color both on the um, dictionary pages and on our regular copy paper. So, and this one, I'm trying to think. I believe that this one was put into a magazine, but it was on a clean page in the magazine. Then this one I stuck on a, a page that was already wet. I think that this was a blue page where I had done some blue. And so it turned out striped like that because, and I think part of it is also not just because there was already some color there, but because the magazine, because it was wet, it was all like bumpy. And so um, I think that's what gave us this nice look on there. And then here is our 
red with the sprinkle of the coffee and here is red with the coffee mixed in with the red and so looking at the those next to each other you get a much more vintage look when you put the coffee in there and so that is how our pages turned out and what the colors looked like so these are the ones that i just showed you and then we also have there was no point in going through absolutely every single one we have all of these so we really wound up with a lot of pages and this took me about two days one day to kind of color everything and then one day to let it dry so but i think that that is a really nice amount of colored papers they have a really cool texture to them and i did keep oh some of them I put on the parchment, parchment that was red, and then I put like the yellow on there, and it picked up some of the color off of the parchment. And that's also where some of the, um, that's where some of the stripes came from was the parchment, and some of the stripes came from the magazine. They both kind of did the same thing. So, but the one thing I did notice after it was all done and I saved all the colors. The colors separated. I'm not sure what this white is. Some kind of binder must be in the Kool-Aid. So um, that looks kind of cool. But, you know, you can still use it. You just give it a good shake, mix all of that back together. And, um, you know, then you get your color back. But this is uh, coffee. And I think this is coffee and blue because I thought it kind of made a greenish color. And then this is purple, or this is coffee and yellow. That's what it is. I didn't save the yellow because it was so light. I didn't really um, feel that I wanted to save it. Now, this is the purple, and the purple was the very first one I did a day before we started the um, this dyeing process. The purple's, oh, I guess it mixed back together. It just didn't get milky. No, no. There's a lot of white flying around in there, so that one didn't mix back together very well. So I'm thinking that even though this works very well, I'm glad I got all those colored papers, and it was worth the dollar twenty-five to buy these colors and make all those papers, and I could have made a lot more. But I don't know that I'm going to save these. And, I mean, I, I will keep them for now so that I have them if I need them because you can still use them to just drip on a piece of paper. Um... I wonder if I have one of the yellow ones here that I don't care for. Because you can always take them and just, whoops. Just come up and let them drip on your paper. I love the looks of splatter drips. And I'm, I am giving this just a touch of a squeeze because it's not dripping out completely on its own, but very carefully because I don't want to squeeze out too much. Um, but then you can just do it like that and then let that dry and you've got another whole look. Um, but here in a few weeks, we're going to do a different type of coloring those and those colors. Now I've done Kool-Aid coloring before and I've never had it separate like that. So I don't know why it did that. Um, it must be some kind of a change to their formula or something, but I'm going to keep those for now, but we're going to reuse these bottles at a later date. So I'm not going to forget this week. This is what we need for next week. So for next week, we are going to, from the Dollar Tree, this is just foam and poster board adhesive, just another type of glue to have in your stash. And then some. we're going to pick up some little clothespins. They had two different sizes. I also really wanted to get the regular size clothespins because they were great for clips, to clip things together while they're drying. But they didn't have any of those bigger ones. So these ones will work in a little bit on something smaller that you want to clip together but um but this is what we're going to use next week we're going to get the nice cute little tiny tiny ones and then the little medium size ones and then because this is what we're going to use next week i also did pick up a shower curtain and i did see gail gustinelli had a shower curtain on one of her 
um, videos. And that's what gave me the idea instead of the garbage bags for whenever you're dyeing something because this is one full sheet of plastic and it might be a little heavier than our garbage bags. So we're going to use this as a drop cloth um, when wherever we're doing something messy. So if you already have a plastic tablecloth or you've got your garbage bags and you liked the way that they worked, you don't have to get this, but it, you know, I just think it'll be nice to have. And so we're going to pick that up. So we have one two, three, four items at a dollar and a quarter. We spent five dollars for these supplies, so that puts 250 in our bank. And we had 22.25. And so now we're going to have twenty-four dollars and seventy-five cents in our bank that we're saving for something bigger at a later date. So I hope that you enjoyed this project. I now have to go put all these pieces together. I have no idea how long this is, but um, if you stuck around till the end, I hope that you had a good time. I hope you enjoyed the way they looked. They're gonna be fun to play with. They have a very nice texture to them. Probably has something to do with that binder in there. Um, I really do like the texture of them. So, But thank you very much for watching. If you wanna make sure that you see all of my videos, click on the bell and that will let you know each time I upload a video. It's not going to make you watch it, but it's just going to let you know there's one there. And thank you very much for stopping by. I really do appreciate each and every one of you. And I hope that you all have an outstanding day. Bye-bye.